Sports and sporting events are a common occurrence worldwide with history dating back to before the first recorded Olympic Games in 760 BC. However, esports, the practice of playing competitive video games for sport, is a relatively new phenomenon and an industry which continues to grow today. From StarCraft to WarCraft and MOBAs and DOTAs, and even virtual card games, new esports are becoming popularized and tournaments are celebrated as an event for aspiring competitors to show off their skills and earn some prize money in the process. One of the most recent esports out there is Overwatch, a team-based first-person shooter developed by Blizzard Entertainment. The 2016 release quickly garnered a large fan base due to its colorful cast of characters and cartoonish style, but there is also a more serious side to Overwatch. This is The Path to Pro. Overwatch League, or OWL, is the highest form of competition in the game. Once a year, the top teams gather to play in front of millions of viewers and compete for the title of Overwatch League Champions in a cash prize pool which has reached $5 million as of the most recent season in 2019. In traditional sports, it can be tough to get into the professional scene, it is often overlooked or criticized for being too easy. I mean, you just have to sit at a computer and play video games, right? Actually, no. Getting into professional Overwatch requires immense skill and training, and it's incredibly difficult. Players often have talents that overlap with traditional sports players. For example, two players from top team NYXL, New York Excelsior, Sibiobi and Pine, played professionally in bowling and badminton respectively before starting their Overwatch careers. Alright then, there we go, so Bilby decides to take matters into his own hands, he's done playing! He's done playing with your mistakes instead! He gets the team against Sibiobi! Running amok! All the kills! Getting into Overwatch League is also not guaranteed. Even if you're good enough to outdo everyone else, you need to be able to get through tryouts and work well with the specific players of the team that you're being recruited to. OWL teams also have a lot of management that goes into them. Each team has a general manager, up to 12 players, and a handful of coaches that, to teach the players strategies and techniques for a game that is constantly evolving as new heroes are released and changed. Once a player has secured a spot in the league, however, they make a minimum salary of $50,000, with some players such as Decay making $300,000 annually. OWL players are also guaranteed retirement saving plans, housing accommodation, and healthcare. The most effective way to get contracted onto a team in OWL is to play in Overwatch Contenders. Contenders is a slightly smaller league which is also run by Activision Blizzard, where players are usually unpaid, as team contracts are allowed but not mandatory. Contenders players generally aren't as well known as OWL players, but there are some exceptional contenders that stand out. For example, an Overwatch Contenders player, Who Are You, also known as Horu, is currently playing in Contenders under Philadelphia Fusion's academy team, and has been in the scene since the age of 15. Horu is one of the best players in the world, and will be contracted into OWL as soon as he meets the minimum age requirement of 18 years old in August of 2019. But before you can even worry about OWL, you need to get into Contenders in the first place, but there are two ways to do this. The first is to get scattered out of TESPA, an esports organization that runs in universities across North America. Each college has its own esports team, much like how colleges have traditional sports teams. The second way is to win Overwatch Open Division. Open Division is an entirely player-managed tournament overlooked by Blizzard, and anyone can register to play in it. However, only the winning team will be given the privilege to play in contenders. Furthermore, Open Division only runs once every four months, and as you can imagine, it's very competitive. Only the most skilled players will stand a chance competing in this tournament. In order to train for Open Division, community-run amateur leagues are often run at smaller scale, where players get to play against other players of a similar skill level in order to improve. One such amateur league is Scrub League, which was started in late 2017 and became fully operational in February of 2018. Hi, I'm Finn Crystal. <laughs> This is the owner of Scrub League, Fitton Crysdale.
What made you want to start Scrub League? Uh, well, you know, I was kind of, I had my own team, and I wanted consecutive tournaments, or kind of competitive atmosphere that you get in other sports, such as baseball, like outside of school, in the lower levels, because you can only really find that in esports at the highest level possible. The league ran for a few months, giving a lot of teams the chance to improve their skills. Teams would play against each other multiple times a week, with their matches being recorded for self-review later. Matches would also be streamed on Scrub League's Twitch channel, with casters commentating gameplay for the entertainment of viewers, as well as to give feedback for each team involved. What would you say was the impact of the league on like an amateur esports level in Overwatch? I oh, know, I think a lot of people enjoyed it. Like we, at one point, we hit like 450 people, so like. There was a lot of people in it, and I know a lot of people enjoyed it. So, and it didn't ever was never supposed to be something massive like that. So, it always went past what I thought it could be. Immature leagues like Scrub League allow many players to refine their skill and work their way towards Tespa or Open Division. Sorry, while keeping the Winston is really just not working out for them. So, for people who don't already know you, um, who are you? Well, my name is Adam. I also go by Zud Zuppies online, typically. Most people call me Zud. Um, I'm currently 16 and homeschooled. I play a lot of video games on my spare time. I started playing Overwatch when I was 14, and I'm turning 17 in June. Zud was one of the players on Team Nothing Personal, then later moved to Sudo. He played many matches during the time he was in Scrub League, and was considered one of the best players in the league. What was your experience like in Scrub League? Well, I definitely find it more fun playing on a team rather than uh, randomly queuing for competitive. It is nice having all the callouts and having people playing what roles they're comfortable on. However, Zud also discusses the necessity of a backup plan when pursuing such a risky career path. This, this is my thoughts on... Just being a professional gamer in general. I think it's good to have a backup plan if you're planning on getting into it. Like, have some other career choice planned, because it could have a downfall. Yeah, because it's difficult to get into, like, you know, something at a higher level. It's difficult to get into, and some injury could happen. Like, if you got a wrist injury, you're fucked. Or... Um, if you start getting flamed on social media for anything, you're fucked. Um, so, Mr. Zubby, what are your future plans from here? Are you planning to pursue Overwatch to a higher level, or after you've gotten a taste of, you know, real competitive Overwatch in a league type of a situation, are you planning to diverge into something else? Well, I think I may get back into Overwatch if I find the right team to play with. But if that is not the case, I'm going to wait for a new competitive game to come out that I like, and then I may get back into it. Okay, uh, thank you for your time. The end.